Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. If uh, you're still hungry, there's a whole bunch more sitting at the back, and uh, it's absolutely as delicious as usual at the McIntyre Community Center here in Timmins, Ontario. Our next speaker is Haley Halsell Whitney. She's the Mine General Manager of the Eagle River Mine for West Dome Mines. Haley will be speaking on West Dome's Eagle River Mine and how they're building a sustainable future for that operation, which is located 50 kilometers west of Wawa and is producing gold for over 25 years. Haley? Thank you. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you. So I don't know how many people have ever been to Eagle River Mine. Uh, is there a show of hands of how many have been there? Okay, so some of you have, most of you have not. So I'm going to talk a bit about Eagle River, and then I'm going to uh, just focus on two things. One, the talent, because there are quite a number of people here that are job seekers, and uh, we welcome you to come to our booth. And uh, the second part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the procurement because there are quite a few uh, uh, suppliers and consultants and uh, folks that are here. And so I would like to focus on that in the next 20 minutes. No, uh, as usual, I, these are the cautionary statements and I don't expect you to read them. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, call our investor relations uh, team or go to our website. There's quite a bit of information there. We have just uh, published earlier this year 43101. There's quite a bit of information there as well. So Eagle River is uh, 50 kilometers from, from Wawa. And just when you get to um, the halfway lodge, which is actually a landmark. You have to then turn left and go another 50 kilometers through beautiful cottage country. It's totally different from anywhere else you'd ever been, in my opinion. It's truly northern Ontario, and the weather is absolutely different. You literally go 10 kilometers and off of Highway 17, and maybe there's no snow on Highway 17, and you drive right into a snow squall. Winters are longer but the people are wonderful. So for West Dome, as you know, we have two sites. We have Kena and we have Eagle River. And Eagle River has been producing for quite some time. Over the last uh, five years, there has been a focus on Eagle Mine as opposed to uh, Mishi. Mishi has not closed, but we do, and we do have some ore on the ground, but we haven't been mining it since the end of 2020. Now, over the last um, five years, as you can see, we have increased the ore coming from Eagle River, Eagle Mine, to uh, the mill, and hit record production, or historical record production, last year at 101 ounces, which was quite uh, an achievement for us, and folks at our site were very excited about that, and we celebrated that at the end of last year. We're going to continue. Uh, between 95 and 105,000 ounces, and um, for hopefully another 25 years. So on this slide, just to give you an idea, there are quite a few mining companies around us, and uh, from Pemlo all the way to Alamos. And at Eagle River, we have about 25, 20-minute uh, 20 drive between the mine and the mill. Um, our uh, Eagle, Eagle Mine is, uh, you know, uh, about, let's say, 20 kilometers or down the road. And uh, Mishi Pit is closer to the mill. So for us, it's, um, you know, uh, trucking is what takes our ore to our mine. And we're moving, you know, tr above 700 tons a day uh, to our mill. Now, in 2019, we actually uh, improved, did a lot of improvements, to, started to do a lot of improvements to our mill, and uh, raised the, the throughput from uh, 700 tons to hitting 1,000 to 1,200 tons a day. So we have uh, 
you know, replace the number of our, like our jaw crusher or cone crusher. We're doing uh, quite a bit of um, uh, work this year on our thickener. And, uh, you know, going forward, the focus will be on the mine. Okay. Now, uh, 2021 was a special year for us. Or, you know, we not only did we hit our one, 101 ounces, but 1,000 ounces, but we also went through a transition and rebuilt our management team while we were trying to hit record production. Our management team uh, currently has, you know, the capabilities of, uh, of uh, taking us forward. And uh, the talent, you know, the experience and the talent range from anywhere from 15 to 47 years of experience um, on our team. And uh, for us, it's about, you know, taking our Eagle River to the next level, meaning, you know, building our capabilities on the tailings and environment side and making sure that we deliver uh, our ESG uh, goals. But it's also about the legacy that we leave behind when we are no longer there for the next generation. We are working with five First Nations, and uh, we appreciate and thank them for working with us and for the ability to work on, on their lands. For us, there are three areas that we're focusing on, workplace of choice, responsible mining, and operational excellence. For the workplace of choice, it's, you know, people talk about uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. When you come to Eagle River, you see it. We live it every day. We have uh, folks from, you know, all over the many areas of the world, um, a lot of uh, talent from within our community, but we also draw from Timmins, Sudbury, Thunder Bay, Sault Ste. Marie, and uh, we're, we have quite a, you know, few candidates that we're sourcing from outside of Canada as well to come. In terms of operational excellence, I'm just going to focus on our uh, procurement later on, as I mentioned, and uh, take a look at the workplace of choice right now. So here, we do have uh, about 300 employees. We have quite a few contractors on site, especially at, uh, you know, working with us in our underground mine. And uh, we're focused on increasing like women, in, women working uh, at the site as well as indigenous uh, peoples and uh, visible minorities, like myself. Um, our local uh, work, our workforce, we draw a lot from the local communities. About 65% of our talent comes from local communities. And, I mean, we do have people from all over. So, Canada, Senegal, India, Nigeria, Cameroon, myself, I'm from Jamaica originally. So, um, you know, we, we do have quite a diverse culture and uh, people at our site. It makes a big difference when we go to, to uh, make decisions about how we do things. Just walking into a meeting is quite exciting when you have uh, people from all, all uh, er levels of experience. Some of our management teams have worked all over the world. And, um, and uh, just the debates between, um, between them as we seek solutions to the challenges that we face is quite extraordinary. So for those who'd like to come and work with us, please be, be free to uh, apply. So that's my pitch for the, you know, the t uh, on, the t on the talent side. Um, however, it's just a whole different way of thinking about stuff. So I just want to spend the rest of my time talking about uh, procurement on our site because quite a few people here are from uh, our suppliers. So the way that we are doing things at Eagle River is probably a little different from the way that you're used to doing uh, business with us in the past. So for one, we did keep the COVID protocols in place. So we do have a lot of um, you know, uh, emails coming, can I come on site? And, and, uh, and uh, can I come anytime? When can I come? Who do I meet? So first, we do have a process in place. My advice to you would be to engage with folks that are here. I do, I do read my 
emails and my LinkedIn. I probably shouldn't say that because I'm going to be bombarded with stuff, but I do read them. And, uh, and then I forward them to our team. Okay? Uh, our team actually looks at the mine and the mill as a supply chain. It really is. Our goal is to produce gold. Okay? Uh, the mine does not work separately from the mill. So we have a, uh, the mine's responsibility is to deliver the hydrology, the, the mill's responsibility is to, de to deliver the gold, okay? And we work together that way and we think like that. So everything else, whether it's uh, finance or HR, procurement or, uh, you know, site services or stuff, that's like the wiring in your building. If we don't have it, we can't do anything. So we all work together as a team and we look at the bottlenecks within that supply chain. So last year, we brought in a, a continuous improvement team to benchmark from mine to mill, where do we have, what, what are the findings, where do we have our bottlenecks, and what's the approach that we take over the next year, five years, in order to drive those bottlenecks out of the system and be efficient at what we do. So when we actually look at that supply chain, we have identified opportunities, and our goal is to actually for, uh, leveraging talent from within, suppliers, and the community, how do we come up with an integrated solution? So it's not just you know, buying one product or you know, one software, or we actually can see that there are a number of suppliers whose products working together could solve a, 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 a challenge that we have on site or an opportunity. Our goal is actually to take our Eagle River mine beyond any perceived limitations that we have of ourselves to exceed beyond expectations. That's how we're going to get to the mid-tier uh, level um, status. Okay? So a number of uh, you know, uh, folks have come to us about you know, uh, software, one uh, team that I met today, I could see it, we can see it, how that could help us, but it's, we could also see that's part, one piece of the puzzle. So we may actually have multiple suppliers talking to each other, right, because together, that's the solution that we need to achieve an opportunity that we have identified or solve a challenge that we have identified, okay? Now, I'll give you um, an example. Everybody uses cyanide. All the money comes to the If you do have a product that replaces that, please call me. Now, you know, buying cyanide is like buying toothpaste. You know, different companies are selling a product. It's, it's, it's the same thing, different concentrations, delivered in totes or in a tank or, yeah. But it's, it's, it's still cyanide. The challenge for us, being between Thunder Bay and, uh, and uh, um, the Sioux and Timmins, is this, it's really not the price of the, of the unit price of cyanide, because we'll drive that down, yes. We, got, we have good, you know, uh, supplies are being very competitive on that. The challenge is the cost of transportation to the site. And if you look, if you break down the invoice of, a, of cyanide delivery, it's, Yes, we, we have changed suppliers because we got a lower price for cyanide. But it's actually not, that was not the problem. It was, it's all the delivery and that adds up. And over the last two years, we've seen that climb. Now, for us, our management team at thinks here is a, a challenge that we have. Okay, how can we solve that? We're looking at, okay, we're in the middle of, I don't want, yeah, we're not in the middle of nowhere. We are in the middle of somewhere. But we're far from areas where, where, where storage of cyanide or, you know, delivery of cyanide is easy. Okay? It's not, it's not easy. So the question for us is, wow, there are a lot of mining companies around here. Do they have the same challenge? Probably. Probably. Is there any way that we can work with the community or our First Nations community and other mines and suppliers to come up with a way that we can actually move a depot, maybe, in the area. But it's not just cyanide. There's explosive plants. There's a whole lot of other um, products that we purchase that if we had warehousing in the area, do you see where, where I'm going? Like, 
There is a solution to everyone's problem, and it, it, the solution is an integrated solution that can draw in, you know, opportunities for or communities, opportunities for suppliers, opportunities for other mining, uh, um, you know, companies within the area that can solve a very challenging problem that we all probably complain about but don't get together and talk about. And that is how our, you know, um, our management team thinks, okay? Integrated solutions to solve challenges or to achieve opportunities identified within our business that drives us beyond our li perceived limitations towards excellence, okay? I'll give you another example just using cyanide as that too because these are just examples that I'm throwing out that I'm hearing in emails from suppliers or from, my, from our team or opportunities where the community is asking what kind of business opportunities can you provide us with. Here's another one. Um, we would all like to replace cyanide. Is anybody doing any research? The question, the, 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 the thing is that years ago when I joined Falco Bridge, years ago, mining companies had technology centers that did a lot of research. So did suppliers. A lot of technology centers, universities got involved. Somehow over the years we've lost that. And something like cyanide, which is, the, which is a product that if we could replace, would be right in line with the PO, me next, um, you know, we, I don't know if there's any research that's going on. We've tried, we've looked, we've talked to suppliers, and we really don't know. But if we all got together and invested in, in finding a solution, like how the mirror model works, right, then maybe we will find a solution for, uh, to replace cyanide. And cyanide's not the only thing, right? I challenge my team on you know, when they come with a, 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 here is a solution to something, can we do it in half the time, half the cost, better? Uh, are we setting a standard? Are we doing it the same way that we've always done for 100 years? Can we do it a little different, right? That's how we need to think in order to take the mining industry from what we've always done and, and, and setting it up so that people, young people, want to be a part of it. They see it as as, as an opportunity to, to, to be a part of in the future. Okay. There's one other, you know, example that I'd like to, uh, that, I'd, that I'd like to give you as, uh, as, as suppliers and as, you know, uh, folks that are working in, in this industry. And that is, you know, um, work together, work together to, to, to find solutions for the industry as we know it. Like, we know what the challenges are. There's, there's, there's no doubt. Um, whether it's on the ground or, um, or uh, at the mill or in the environment, you know, working together is gonna get us a lot farther than just talking about working together. Now, it, the COVID taught us something. It taught us, it taught us that regular products that we use, there, there are parts of the regular products that we use that are, that's gonna prevent us from buying those regular products. Like who in the world would have thought resin was gonna be a problem? Like, you know, it's like resin. Um, so for us as a small business, even though we have contracts with a, with, a, with a company to supply, you know, over the next two years or three years, we're small compared to larger companies, which means that it doesn't mean that we're at the front of the line if we want cyanide or, you know, uh, explosives or stuff. We all, even with, though we have a contract, we still have to wait. We've found, we've learned that. So what we're interested in is in market intelligence. So let's take, let's take our product, a product. What components make up that product, and are there going to be any delays in any part of that, uh, you know, the components of that product? that in the future is going to prevent us from even acquiring that product. That's, that's the kind of market intelligence that we need to know so that we can say, okay, we need to buy more of that product now before everybody else does, uh, right? So that we're not caught waiting for our delivery in the future. So 
for us, we have uh, built up our, our procurement team. We have a director of procurement. We have our contract specialist that's here in the booth. We have implemented an RFP process, okay? Um, we're, but, we, but behind all of that is market intelligence. What do we need to do? How do we need to think differently so that we're always ahead of the game and never caught shot short on supplies that would cause us to shut down? Okay. Um, for us, I just uh, brought up here the scorecard. So we have an RFP process. So say we have, uh, uh, we have identified with uh, our suppliers a solution, we put out an RFP process, we invite people to bid on that process, okay? It's gonna go through a, a rigorous scoring system. Okay, and on here you'll see environment and social and governance. So we do have people that specialize in this area in our, in our, uh, in our company that's gonna go through that package, operational, technical, and commercial, and we give it a score. And then we debate that score, and uh, we then select the, the, the company that's gonna be awarded that, and we, and we uh, tell the winner that, and then we move on from there. But it's a rigorous process, so that we are fair with the uh, folks, and we, put, and we actually, on our side, get the, the, the products or the solution that we, that we are looking for. Okay, if you have any questions about that, or part of our procurement team is at the booth, and we'll be glad to help you walk you through that. Okay, thank you.